to come out Hi, of third graders. Way. How are you? How was your day so far? Hmm. Hmm. We're checking with our zone. Now we're gonna do something a little different today. Yes, we and are. It's really fun. We're gonna do what's called a freeze frame. Ooh. And we're going to look at the zone chart. We're gonna take a moment to think about how we're feeling. And then we're going to act it out like we're a statue and freeze. And then you're gonna see if you can figure out how we're feeling and the people around you can figure out how you're feeling. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna. You gotta yawn to first. Sure, Mr. Yes. Kevin! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to yawn it's that time of day i'm sorry friends so i apologize when i count down from three you're going to do your frozen statue are you ready you ready mr kevin i'm ready three two one go <laughs> oh no i think we surprised mr kevin Okay, Mr. Kevin, what's your, what's your zone? Okay. You're yellow. You're surprised. I am a little surprised. Uh, more, more, actually, I'm more uh, anxious. Oh. Oh. Of, yeah, a lot of things in the hopper. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Lots going on? Lots going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, good thing this is our last lesson of filming for today. Yes. Okay. All right. Ms. Oslin? I'm good to go. She's good to go. That's yeah. What was that? That's your superhero pose. It's my superhero, my power stance. Your power stance, yeah. And Mrs. Wally, you uh, blue zone, huh? Tired? I want to take a nap. <laughs> you can in a little bit. A few hours. That's okay. Okay. I'm All actually right. really excited to do this lesson because yes. we left off with just, I'm excited to learn about the next group of Yes, Native we Americans. learned so much about during our last expert group. Now, yeah. let's remind I'm ourselves. Of so our sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Remind ourselves of our three personal standards. Yes. We today, are going to. And every day we agree to. <laughs> show respect, respect make, make good decisions, decisions, and solve problems. problems. And one way we show respect every day is by honoring our indigenous land and people. I'm going to invite you to look outside your window. Look at the sky, the trees, your surroundings. Our physical space stands on the historical and ancestral lands of the Puyallup tribe of Indians. We acknowledge the Puyallup tribe of Indians community, their elders, both past and present, as well as future generations. We make this acknowledgement as part of our work to dismantle the ongoing legacies of settler colonialism and unjust treatment. So in the past we've talked about elders. Yes. So now we're talking about future generations. Future generations. What does that mean, future generations? Well, the future means not yet mm -hmm. happened or okay and generations so like my parents are part of a generation and i am the next generation and then your children and then my are the children next. are the next generation and their children are the next generation and then their children after that you probably won't be here anymore mm -hmm. so why does that matter though when we're talking about the land and the people here well, don't we want everyone to be able to live? We've talked about how beautiful our area is, like this picture mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and we want it to still be beautiful for them, and we want everyone to be happy and healthy. That's true. So there are things that we can do mm -hmm. today to ensure the happiness and the health of people who come after us. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, so we can protect our earth, but we could also think about the people, the people and make decisions that show respect to the people. I'm wondering if we show respect to the people, then naturally people will respect the earth. Oh. I wonder if the not respecting the earth has something to do with how we're treating each other. The platinum rule. Treat others and things the way they, they want to be, be treated. treated. Hmm. hmm, something to think about. Hmm. It's all connected, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad we <laughs> hold this space for this every day. Yes, it's I important. And we'll continue to do that throughout this year and then going forward as well. Yep. Okay, our essential question. Okay. We've been learning about how did the environment influence the development of Northwest Native American cultures? We've learned quite a few big words. Time for the, the big. Yeah, we need a, I need a new graphic. 
for that. That's all right. We can just say it. Of, but we can say big social studies and science word. <laughs> they are because they're they social are. studies and science words. They are. Social studies and science, they kind of blend together they sometimes. Do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because social studies is the study of social and people, and we use scientific yes. process to understand that. Yes. And so it kind of all goes together. Anthropologist. Anthropologist is a scientist, scientist who studies humankind. humankind. Macaw. That's an indigenous tribe of Nia Bay in Washington. That's one of our tribes here in Washington, the coast. That's the land next to the ocean. Now that's not the land we're looking at right here. This is not the coast. This is looking into Puget Sound. The coast is if you go over to like Ocean Shores mm -hmm. or Long Beach and there's no other land. It's just ocean until you get to the next island. Mm -hmm. We also learned about Spokane. Which is a city. It is. Named after. A tribe of Indians inhabiting northeastern Washington. And the plateau. That's a high level area of land. Which is where the Spokane tribe lived and still lives today. And then we learned the word reservation. Oh yes. Which is an area of land set aside by the government for Native Americans. Mm -hmm. You ready to do our Washington native sound off? Yep. Okay. This is adapted by Rachel Hoff, who you know. Hi Rachel. I don't know, but I've been told. Regions of Washington, their tribes did hold. Each tribe lived a different way. Made Washington great to this very day. Sound off. Natives. Sound off. Of Washington. Sound off. One, two, three, four. History. History. The coastal tribes lived along the shore. The Pacific Ocean gave food galore. Salmon, seal, and whale they ate. Their totem poles were really great. Sound off. Natives. Sound off. Of Washington. Sound off. One, two, three, four. History. History. The Plateau tribes, they had it tough. The harsh climate, climate made it really rough. They walked in search of roots and seeds. After horses, they moved with greater ease. Sound off. Natives. Sound off. Of Washington. Sound off. One, two, three, four. History. Okay, last lesson. Mm -hmm. We read about the Quileutes. Yes, which is a tribe on the coast. Yes. And they are fishermen. Mm -hmm. And they fish for seals, dolphins, fish, salmon. And they also hunt for berry and roots as well. Mm -hmm. Then we learned that they use the wood from cedar trees mm -hmm. to make baskets, rain hats, oh. skirts, and they use the wool and the fur from mm -hmm. their wolves and dogs to make wood blank uh, wool blankets yes. to keep them warm. And then we learned about their housing. They had big houses, mm -hmm. which we call long houses, and there was a big totem pole at the front to signify each family. Mm -hmm. And inside the big houses were a lot of people. Yes. There was a chief, there was nobility, that's kind of like kings and queens. Mm. And commoners, just the regular people. Okay. And we learned that they would capture slaves from other tribes mm -hmm. and make them work for them. Then we learned about how they travel. Mm -hmm. These people did not just stay in the Pacific Northwest. No. They would travel from Alaska to California, north to south and south to north, all along the coastal waters. And they traveled in red cedar canoes. And they had lots of different sizes of canoes. Yes, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Like they had two person canoes and then they had a 58 foot canoe. Huge, Very right? Big. Yeah. And they used the canoes for different reasons. Yes. Like fishing and traveling. And then we learned all about the history of these people when they came in contact with the settlers. Mm -hmm. And we learned that um, the Quileute people were told in 1855 by the government that they had to move mm -hmm. onto a reservation with all different tribes in it because they were yes. rural, that they were going to make the reservation mm -hmm. for all the rural tribes and they were going to have to live with all these tribes that they didn't know. And they said no. And then the government in 1889, when Washington became a state, said, fine, then we're building the reservation around you. And they built a reservation where they were living. And that's what we've learned. And how did you remember all that? Well, Remember, we took those jot and dot, like we read, and then we jot down. I just read all of that off of my notes from when we were jotting down. You never would have remembered it. No I would way. I remembered no all way. of that. Nope, mm -mm. I read it straight off of here. I drew some pictures to remind mm -hmm. me, and I wrote important words, and I was able to give a synopsis of what happened. Yes. So we're gonna do the same thing today. My journal ran out of paper, so I have a new journal. We're gonna write the name of the tribe. Just the Walla Walla. Oh, we're gonna do, oh, I was really excited to learn about the Walla Walla. Mm -hmm. 
and there's going to be different sections. How many sections are there, Miss Austin? Five. Five sections. And I'm actually going to do half a page for each section. Gives me a little bit more space. Yes. So the Walla Walla is a plateau tribe. Ooh. So we're going to do some thinking about how are they similar to and different Ooh. from the Quileute tribe that were on the coast. Neat. Mm -hmm. That's why we wanted you to put them in the same notebook. I have them in different ones because I ran out of paper, but that's okay. So I'm going to set this notebook to the side. All right, Miss Oslin. Here we go. There were no buffalo to hunt on the Walla Walla Indians' land. Instead, they ate salmon, roots, berries, deer, and elk. They traveled from season to season to fish for salmon and hunt for deer and elk. The women picked berries and dug roots. In the winter, they would stay in camp and live off the food they had dried and stored. Okay. So now we drop. Mm -hmm. This makes me think of people saying, are you prepared for winter? Mm. Yes, because that's exactly what they did, didn't they? Mm -hmm. They spent the rest of the year picking berries, which we know would not be around in the winter, um, and fishing and hunting deer and elk. And then winter, they stayed where they were, I mm -hmm. imagine, because the climate was harsh. It's hard to move around um, and lived off what they had dried and stored. Mm -hmm. Okay, what I said is one, food. Berries, root, salmon, deer, elk. They traveled for food during the spring to the fall. Mm -hmm. And then in the winter, they stayed in camp to eat what they had. And typically the women picked berries. I'm gonna say picked. And the men hunted and fished. Okay. Most of the Plateau tribe's clothing was made of deer skin. The men wore fringed shirts, pants, belts, and moccasins. The women wore long deer skin dresses, corn husk hats, and knee length moccasins. They were decorated with elk teeth and beads and colored vegetable dyes. Can you read that one more time? Yes. Most of the Plateau tribe's clothing was made of deer skin. The men wore fringed shirts, pants, belts, and moccasins. The women wore long deerskin dresses, corn husk hats, and knee length moccasins. They were decorated with elk teeth and beads and colored vegetable dyes. I don't know how to spell moccasins. I need to look up there. M O C C. M O C C A S R N. Okay, men had fringed shirts, pants, belts, and regular moccasins. And then both of these were decorated <coughs> with elk teeth. We've talked about before how they use every part of the mm -hmm. animal beads and vegetable dyes. Cool. Okay. Because they had to travel from place to place to gather food, the Walla Walla people had to have houses that were easy to move. They made special kinds of tents called long houses that could reach up to 80 feet long. They used long wooden poles covered by tool mats. When the family wanted to move, they took off the mats and traveled to their next camp. They left the poles behind for when they returned to that camp. It's interesting, some different knowledge than what I've learned before. So they didn't have the cedar plank type long houses. Mm -hmm. They had long houses that were covered with, they were 80 feet long. That's a very long house. Mm -hmm. 
I get where they get the name Longhouse from. Mm -hmm. And then... Oh, they were uh, covered in tool mats. Tool mats. T-U-L-E. So there's all these different mats. Mm -hmm. It must be to keep the weather and such out. Mm -hmm. And it's the mats that they carried and left the poles. Yes, so I imagine that every year they returned to the same camps. So they must so have the been poles. a cycle of where they would mm -hmm. go. That's kind of an interesting way to live. Mm -hmm. Carried mats, left poles. So this is surprising. Why is it surprising, Mr. Kevin? Tool, well, there's two reasons it's surprising to me. Number one, tool, I, I didn't know this, but it's like a, a long grass. Yes. Oh. They can weave it. Yeah. Into these mats that are covering huh, everything. And then this the second thing that's really fascinating to me is that uh, that they left their, their poles behind. So part of the structure they just left in place, and they would come back to that encampment, mm -hmm. and there would be the the ingredients to make their homes mm -hmm. i imagine it would have been really hard to travel with the really big poles yes. for an 80 yeah. foot long house whereas yeah. with the mats they could probably just roll them and fold them and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. different people could carry them uh -huh. to, to share the weight mm -hmm. hmm. so interesting okay are you ready i'm ready beginning in the early 1700s the walla walla people raised great herds of horses Having horses made it possible for them to travel long distances to gather food. They also traveled across the Rocky Mountains to trade dried roots and salmon to plain tribes who had buffalo meats and hides. After meeting the plains tribes, they learned to use a travoy to carry their things. Travoy. That's the thing on the back of the horse. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. So not only did traveling give them access to more and different resources it also taught them different ways to travel i'm trying to travel t-r-a-v-o-i-s to haul their items. So I put the 1700s, there were horses. Mm -hmm. The horses were used to travel and trade the Plains people, where they traded for buffalo and things to eat, and they also traded knowledge with one another. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they learned was how to use travoy to haul their items. Okay, one more paragraph, are we ready? Yep. Okay. Lewis and Clark, I learned about Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark mm -hmm. wrote about meeting the Walla Walla in 1806 on their way back from the Pacific Ocean. In 1855, the Walla Walla signed a treaty with the U.S. government, giving up more than 6.4 million acres of their land, and the tribe was forced to move to a reservation. I wonder if when they signed the treaty, if they knew they were going to be forced to move to a reservation mm -hmm. or if they thought they were just going to be able to continue living the way they were. Mm -hmm. I wonder how, how big the reservation was. Mm -hmm. yeah, understanding of. is a big part of that, right? Mm -hmm. When you go into a bargain with someone. Yeah. I'm wondering how much they understood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when people don't understand and someone of power comes in, mm -hmm. they can use that in a way that can be 
um, harmful to the other person mm -hmm. if you have someone that is not treating others the way they want to be treated. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful. So how did the environment influence the development of Northwest Native American cultures? So a lot. A lot. <laughs> now we have a lot of, we've had a lot of input, mm -hmm. had some time to process, um, but that's going to be part of your independent work is to continue processing. And compare. And compare. Like I'm, I'm just thinking about just like what they ate. Mm -hmm. The land influenced what they were able to eat. Mm -hmm. The Plateau tribe, Walla Walla, was not able to eat buffalo because they weren't there. They were over in the plains. Mm -hmm. They also weren't able to eat, I don't know, dolphins, fish, mm -hmm. other than like salmon, salmon. Um, whales, because those were over on the coast. Mm -hmm. So the land definitely impacted what they could eat. Inf impacted what they wore, again, because that's right. what they had access to, which- The Quileutes only used the dog fur. Right. And it was all plants. Right. And we know that our clothing is a huge part of our culture. Absolutely. It's what distinguishes a lot of cultures from mm -hmm. one another. And then the Walla Walla, they were using deer skin and fringe shirts and pants and belts and moccasins. What, when some people think of Native Americans, kind of the picture that comes mm -hmm. into their mind, I think is different. The Quileutes definitely didn't have that picture. Mm -hmm. It was very different mm -hmm. because of the land they were on and the resources they had available. Mm -hmm. There's more with like the housing. Mm -hmm. They both had these really big houses. Yes. But they're made from different resources, resources from the land. Mm -hmm. And I know there were other homes that the Plateau tribes used, but maybe not the Walla Walla. The Walla Walla maybe only used these long houses mm -hmm. with the mats. Mm -hmm. Different tribes did different things based on where they were in the plateau. Mm -hmm. The one thing that's not very different. <laughs> yep. Uh, different how they travel. Yes. Boat and foot, horse and foot. You can't, can't ride in a canoe on the land. No. <laughs> and can't ride on a horse in the ocean. In the ocean, you cannot. So the land is impacting their ability to travel and how they get around. Mm -hmm. And then in 1855, mm -hmm. all the treaties happened. Mm -hmm. Contact with the settlers. And they all ended up in reservations eventually. Mm -hmm. And not willingly. No. They were forced there. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's very similar. Mm -hmm. That's something to sit with and think about. It is. What are they gonna do with that information today? You're gonna think about what you thought you knew about Northwest Native American mm -hmm. cultures. Way back what, when. Way back when. And what you want to know, because we know that as we learn more, we often get more questions. So many more questions. And you've had a lot of information, mm -hmm. so you can probably start to answer some of the questions that you had at the beginning of our unit. And there's lots of ways to process this information. Mm -hmm. Some people might process by writing. Some people might process by doing art and then writing about it. Mm -hmm. Some people might process by building something to show what they know mm -hmm. with Legos or, or clay or something else. Yes, maybe Minecraft. Ooh. I'm learning about Minecraft. Me too. I've never, I'm just starting to learn about it, but it can be pretty interesting to show mm -hmm. what you know. So you are going to answer the question, how did the different environments mm -hmm. of the coast and plateau regions of Washington impact the different cultures of the Native American tribes that lived there? I have an idea. What? They could even use their computers to look up what the deer skin clothing look like and oh. what the cedar clothing look like and like make like almost like a collage um, comparison chart. Oh, interesting. Yes. That would be really cool. That would be neat. And then write about how they connect and how they're different. Yeah. And you could send it to us here at TV Classroom. I would love to see that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kevin, what are two ways that our third graders can send us their thinking? Well, you can send them to TV Classroom at Tacoma.k12.wa.us. And that's, of course, an email. Uh, and then you can also send them, if you want to print them out and send them via the regular mail, send them to TV Classroom, our 601 South 8th Street location, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Thank you. It would be really coming. interesting to see someone take the expert group information yes. and create a poster about those tribes and then have the two posters to compare. That would be interesting. It'd be a really fun project. It would. Mm -hmm. Okay, our affirmation. Affirmation time. 
what if we remind ourselves that we can't we are creative when we show what we know we could do that did you have another idea well i was thinking about what we did with the last group or mm -hmm. two groups ago and i it was i can be creative when i process information oh yeah i think i like that one better I are you creative. okay with that yes i am creative when i process information mm -hmm. I you like have to be creative mm -hmm. you don't always have to just write mm -mm. get creative friends it helps your brain understand it better mm -hmm. and it helps you understand your brain better yes <laughs> and for some people that's writing and that's okay yeah. but you get to choose the power of choice it's so good are you ready friends Let's take a deep breath I am creative, creative when I process information. information. Excellent job today, third graders. We hope you have a great rest of your day. We look forward to seeing you back here next time in our TV classroom. See you later, friends. Bye. Greetings, young adventurers. You will be going on a quest. It will be a dangerous quest filled with obstacles and dangerous creatures. Should you make it to the end of each level, you will receive a coin. Find all four coins and you will be crowned the champion and receive this prize. Good luck, young adventurers. <sighs> well, time for my nap. Good day, young adventurers, and good luck.
Greetings, young adventurers! Congratulations on collecting all four coins! Well done! By completing this quest, you will now receive your prize! I hope to one day see you again for another adventure. Goodbye, young adventurers.